Our culture tends to be pretty quick to throw away things with flaws on them. And I think one big reason for that is because it's so easy to come by things. We can buy things cheaply with no thought into the effort that was put into making them, and we can replace things pretty easily with not too much cost. But when things are handmade, people generally care for them a little bit more, and I know when I've put a lot of time and effort into making something, I'm gonna try to maintain it a lot better. So today I have something that I made a few years ago that I really love. I went to a flea market and I was looking for something to create a storage bedside bench. I found something great for not too much cost. I bought a military trunk and I saw it had lots of potential. It wasn't the prettiest on the outside though, so I decided to upholster it. Which, by the way, stick around to the very end of the video if you want to know a super simple and inexpensive hack for adding piping to your upholstery. I used a plain old painter's drop cloth for some inexpensive durable fabric that had some cool texture to it, and then I moved my master bedroom into a really small space that had no room for any extra furniture. So I decided this would make a nice bench for this awkward little hallway kind of thing in my downstairs bathroom. This bathroom has two doors in it and I didn't want the kids running through the bathroom into the playroom so I just locked that door and I put the seat there and it solved a couple problems for me. But unfortunately a kid has stained it. <laughs> my child decided to put a wet towel on this and I couldn't get the water spot off and it didn't look like just a water spot either. So I came up with a plan to camouflage it and I hope you enjoy watching the creative process. So I've got some spray paints in my favorite colors today and I'm just gonna try to really quickly do a peacock design just to kinda go with my other decor and also because I really love them. I think they're beautiful. So I've got an image of some peacock feathers as reference and then I've got my tulip color shop paints which I'll link in the description box below in case you've got some stained furniture or clothing that you wanna update with these. I've used them a couple times and I like them a lot, especially teal blue colors. So I'm gonna get started. So I've got a design idea that I'm gonna go for and I'm gonna come back in with gold at the end. But first I'm gonna take some of the same fabric that I used to make this and protect the edges down here that are not stained and that I don't want to spray paint. Now perfection is not my goal. This is just adding a splash of color. It's definitely covered up my stain. And then I'm gonna do a lot of freehand painting with a paintbrush and some acrylic paints as well as some fabric medium. Working in a well-ventilated area is definitely a must with these because they tend to have quite a bit of smell. Okay, I've got the main colors that I want and now I'm gonna go freehand a bunch of feathers on it. Now I'm going to be mixing up one part of this textile medium with two parts of the acrylic paint. If you enjoy seeing the process of me doing DIYs like this, 
please go ahead and just click that like button right now and subscribe if you haven't already, as well as hit the notification bell so that you'll know when the next video is up. That helps my channel to grow and it helps other people to find it so that they can be inspired too. I really appreciate it. Let me know in the comments below if you think it worked out, if I should have done something differently, or if you would try this, how you would do it, and um, let me know if you think it's gaudy or gorgeous. I thought I would put that back in the bathroom, but I'm thinking that I'd rather have it here instead. This little end table I've needed to repaint, and I've never gotten around to it. It became a makeshift place for the kids to put their homework on, but it just kind of looks really cluttered, so I think I'm going to nix that completely and put the plant over there tidy it up a little bit, and then just have some extra seating out here. Well, I really love how this turned out. I think it ties in my kitchen carpet <laughs> and the gold on my mirror really well, as well as all the blue in my living room furniture. I will say that the texture is a little bit crunchy, especially the gold paint, which was supposed to be soft, but it's not that soft. And I'm going to probably treat this with Scotch Guard because it will be in the sun at least for a little while, and I don't want it to fade. Maybe eventually it'll end up back in the bathroom, but for now I need it out of there so that I can get around to repairing the spots on the walls and then painting in the bathroom. But that's for some other time when I've got more energy. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a big favor and hit that like button. And if you want to see more content on intentional creative living, click subscribe if you haven't already and be sure to hit that notification bell so that you'll know when the next video is up. Otherwise, it won't show up when you open up your YouTube page, so make sure to do that. I hope you're doing well lately, and I just want to encourage you that just like with this bench where it got an unsightly stain, sometimes in life we're going to have things that aren't so great, but we can make the best of the situation by focusing not on the problem, but focusing on ways that we can bring beauty to the situation, even when it's less than ideal. You've got a lot to offer the world, and you matter. I hope you have a good day. Bye. Close the door. Thank you. Oh, you guys, this quarantine thing. <laughs> okay, this video is not about upholstering because there are lots of videos done by professionals out there, but I will share with you one trick because I don't think it's common knowledge. I think that it'll make this really classy design technique a little bit more doable and demystify it for you. I was really intimidated when I thought about having to sew piping. I didn't know how to do it. So in my quest to figure it out, I discovered a hack and I wanted to share that with you. So I got some clothesline from the Dollar Tree. You might have some string laying around your house. Put it along the edge of my piece of fabric like this. 
and pinned it along the edge of my pattern. In the case of this upholstered military trunk, I just put this around the edge of the rectangle shape that was the top of my seat with the points of the pins going away from me and the bulk of the fabric on the outside of the sewing machine so it wouldn't get bunched up under the arm. And then I continued to upholster from there. I'm not a skilled seamstress, I did not know how to sew box edges, but I just put foam under that and it came out all right. So where there's a will, there's a way. And, and this piping trick can really up the design level of your DIY upholstery. We have a beautiful rose for your viewing pleasure made by Miss Kindergartner. Thank you. Our culture tends to be quitty, quitty. Our quilt, can't talk. Our culture, <laughs>